Hey everyone, it's Jack, and today I'm going to take a look at Seduction Linux. This is actually one of my favorite Debian distros out there. Seduction is based on Debian SID, which is the unstable branch, which means you get the latest and greatest Debian releases out there from the testing mm. repos. So that is one of the reasons I love Deduction. Also, Deduction is a very stable release, of course, because it's Debian. This is something that I reviewed about a year ago and had great results with it. In fact, I even daily drove it for a while. Even though I'm an arts person, I need to use arts because I got to kind of stay cutting edge. But Deduction allowed me to that as well. In fact, that's something I probably could have continued to daily drive and probably not have had too many problems. Although I do like to customize a lot of things, so it's a lot easier just to do that in Arch, especially when it comes to desktops and so forth. However, this is something I would recommend, I think, for a lot of people. And don't let the unstable fool you just because it's coming from the unstable. It doesn't really mean it's that unstable, although it does help to know your way around the terminal a little bit, just in case. So what I'm going to do here, I'm out at the website and I'm going to find their download link because I want to download this and just get right to it. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to hit the download link here. This will take us out to our download page. And then you can see the different desktops that are available by default right off the bat. So we got our KDE Plasma and that's the one I want to go with because I like KDE. That's a good one. And so I'm going to just hit the download US link here, load it in and I'll be right back. Okay, and so here I am. I'm out at the live boot screen here. So we'll just go ahead and, and really nice rub menu right off the bat. But I'm going to scroll down here. We're using my arrow key. Just hit boot. And then we should be booting right into our live edition and see how it looks. And so far, I like it already. We got a cool black screen, a bunch of white letters, which is actually normal. So here we come. Uh, we're getting into our live environment now. And it usually takes a minute or so to load in all the different things graphics and all that and it's actually moving quite fast and love the splash screen looks great and awesome background there and it loaded right in so very cool so here we got our ade desktop here and it's all looking great with the seduction branded wallpaper in the background really liking it already just great first impression and over here we got our KDE launcher here looking good. I'm just going to get right to it. I'm going to hit this installer here and just install this guy. We'll just see how it comes out. So here we go. We got our seduction installer. And so I'm just going to go ahead and hit next. And we'll just go with the default. So it already detected our location and our keyboard settings and everything. And then here we got our settings for our disk. And I think I'm just going to go with swap to file. I think that's good. And then let's change that to ButterFS. Actually, one of the things they mentioned on their website is one of the improvements to Seduction is that they solved the partitioning problem. And I remember that from last year when I installed this on hardware, at least in my personal experience, what happened was when I did an install over an existing ButterFS partition, then it would not boot. And so I had to fix that boot problem, which I fixed in a video. Actually, I kind of resolved it if I remember correctly. And with that, I'm just going to hit next here and then type in a username. And I'm just going to go with the usual toad wait and come down here, give myself a password, add that in. And then I'm going to go with use the same password for the administrator account and then hit next. And that should do it. So there's our summary and it all looks good to me. So I'm just going to hit install, install now, and that'll start the process and looking great already just because it's Action Linux. So there we go. I'm going to just hit pause here and I'll be right back. when. It okay, I'm back. So that all went pretty smooth and I'm just going to go ahead and restart now. Back in a flash. Okay, here we are. And so looks like everything went fine. We're at our grub screen here. Looks good. So I'm just going to hit enter. And I can see right off the bat, we're using the latest kernel, 6.4.10-1. At least the latest stable as far as I know. So it is cool. Glad to see a new kernel on here. That's especially important if you're running hardware that's very new, or maybe you're running a Mac or something. So we're going to do Toadwick and then type in a password, hit enter to get us in the what? 
Oh, right. Yeah, username. Username's got to be lowercase. So if you have to type in the username yourself and it's not there already, uh, use lowercase. And that should get us to the desktop. So we'll see how that works. This time it's going in. So there we go. And our desktop is loading. So we got past that minor hurdle. <laughs> and I see our updater is going off there. So I'm just going to click that real quick. And I'm not going to put you through the pain of updates, but it's always a good idea to do the updates first. And so that's going to open up in our Discover Package Manager, which is down there in the lower left. And so Discover opens up automatically when we do that. And here we got our updates. And so I'm just going to run this and then pause the video. And it's probably going to have me do a restart and everything. So after it's all done doing its updates, then we can kind of continue on in case we want to install anything here. We'll have the updates because you should always be updated before you install software. Always good practice. I'm just going to authenticate here at the updater run. And now you can see in the lower left corner our progress bar so that's going to run and it will be done in a flash and there you go through the magic of video just like that going to hit restart now and again through the magic of video it's done and rebooted how cool is that so here in our taskbar we got our system settings our dolphin file manager our console and Firefox. And over here we got our other cool stuff like our network settings and then we got our extra icons here for our notification updates, clipboard and so forth. So these are all kind of the extra things that are hidden that don't really need to be cluttering up the desktop but handy. Then we got our calendar here and finally our show desktop. So if you hit that it just kind of minimizes all your windows and you can see everything. So let's take a look at what we got in here by default. If I remember right, Seduction is pretty uh Pretty full of good, useful stuff right out by default, which is cool. So here we got our graphics app. You can see Flameshot, uh, which is a nice screen capture. GIMP is installed by default. We got our color chooser. That's handy. Ocular for viewing PDF files and so forth. And Xsane for scanning. Then we got Firefox and our internet here. And then a lot of our default stuff that you would typically find in KDE, like Kmail, Conqueror, and so forth. Very nice. And we even have our KTorrent for our torrent client. Let's take a look at Firefox. I'm kind of curious to see whether this is the ESR version, the extended service release, or if it's installed right from a Debian package. And it opened right up. That's cool. I'm going to go hit help. And then about. And yeah, here we have the latest version 117.0. And it looks like it's installed as a Debian package. I'm liking that too. I kind of prefer that personally. And being out of the testing repos, I would kind of expect that anyway. And then here under multimedia, we got our Dragon Player for music, Caffeine, MPV for videos, SM Player, also another great video player. And then our Office apps, and it appears we have LibreOffice installed by default. That's kind of the standard coolness. And Ocular as well. I'm going to open up LibreOffice because I just want to take a look at the theming and see how well the theming is integrating with the default theme. A lot of distros don't do well with that in LibreOffice, but we are doing just fine here. Seduction, again, just never disappoints me. Loving it. And let's take a look at our latest our version here. And you can see it's 7.552. Nice. Very up to date. The Debian. So I like that. And then we got our settings here. Got our Synaptic Package Manager, which is actually one of my favorites. And I just want to run HTOP here since it was like in the menu. Uh, why not just take a look at it? I like that HTOP was linked right to it. And wow, that's really impressive. Uh, 716, 711. Now down to 697 megs. So that is really quite impressive. Uh, KDE just seems to get more and more efficient as time goes on. To me, that seems really nice, especially on a ready-made distro that's kind of all done for you. That is, I'm going to close the window here. And I am liking the HTOP results. So that is something that I think is worth noting for sure. And then we have our other various system utilities here, our system monitor and and a lot of the things that you would expect to find in a KDE distro. So it is really well docked here. And then, of course, our utilities, again, full of the KDE utilities. And also has Midnight Commander, which is a nice console-based file manager. And Vim by default. And then here, of course, we have our system applications as well. And I might as well open Discover again just to kind of 
look at the features of the package manager here because this is the package manager that most GUI users would want to play with, I would assume. And here we can see our most popular, so in VLC player, even Telegram, then 0 AD. And uh, all the favorites like Caden Live and, and our most popular game, 0 AD, Super Tux Cart, Godo Engine. So that's one of the highest related rated developer tools, along with Genie. Genie's one of my favorite GUI editors there. And then, of course, we can go to all applications and just kind of see a listing of everything. Nice and cool retro term. That's something I featured in one of my earlier videos. That's a, that's a very cool application, especially if you like having that uh, retro look from the 90s. Very nostalgic. And then, of course, you can come up here and just search for specific apps. So if you're looking for something specific like Blender, you could go in here and just find it and then do an install. And yeah, impressive. 3.62. Nice to see. So I'm just going to hit install here and let it do its thing here and just kind of install this. And so the up-to-dateness of the apps, that's one of the reasons I really like the Seduction Linux distro here because it's all set up with the latest repos, testing, and so forth, unstable. And you don't have to do a lot of work to get it that way. Just uh, as simple as running the Calamari's installer and you're good to go. And so there we go. We got our Blender installed. Just going to launch that real quick just to make sure it worked. There it is. I like the animation there. They always seem to have a cool new animation every time they update their version. I always like that. That's pretty cool. And so then we got all our settings there. All looking good. I'm just going to close that. So Blender. Blender is working. And of course, you can also do installs through the terminal. So in case you're not familiar with the terminal, personally, I like doing most of my installs just right through the terminal. And some people are afraid of the terminal. Others aren't. But I could do something like an app search and then search for something like, ah, let's try Hypnotics. I don't think that's probably in there. I guess it would help if I spell it right. But that's a cool IPTV app that you can get like through. Linux Mint and not available. So let's find something more realistic like, hmm, how about OBS Studio? That should be listed there. And there we go. And we can see that it's the unstable branch repo there. And it's 29.1.3. Beautiful. I like it. So I'm going to get it. So sudo apt install OBS dash studio. And we'll just authenticate. And Toadwick is not in the sudoers file. This incident has been reported to the administrator. Oh, I'm in trouble. Now what do I do? I am so busted. Well, then I guess I'm going to have to do an alternative. How about super user? So we'll do SU and then we'll authenticate. And that's better. So now we just can just do not a sudo, but just an app install OBS Studio. And we'll go yes. And that should install it just fine. Yeah, if I remember right, the docs in Linux and some distros don't enable SUDO by default for security reasons. Some people feel that that's just like a security risk, so just go with SU, which I believe is super user. If not, I'll just say it is. Okay, so there we go. Uh, looks like everything worked out just fine. I'm going to go up here and see if it showed up in the menu, and there it is, OBS Studio. So yeah, it just ran just fine. And I guess I didn't really have to open that because I already know the verse, but you can see that it worked, and it looks good. All the theming is proper. Excellent. So there you go, an install through the terminal for those who aren't familiar with it. And then down here, we got our system settings, and then we got our Dolphin. So let's just open that real quick, because I'm going to kind of go in the settings anyway. And usually if I tweak the theme, I would kind of want to see my changes, and Dolphin is a great place to just kind of, it's kind of a nice metric to see your icon theme changes and all that, just right off the bat. And I see that it's uh, double click by default, which is good like in that i think recently kde kind of went to double click by default and i'm doing a neofetch here just to kind of take a look at our stuff and beautiful neofetch screen i like that and you can see seduction is our os of course and then our kernel latest kernel 6.4.14-1 seduction amd and the number of packages we're running bash for our shell Plasma 5.27.7 with our KWIN window manager, Breeze icons, Breeze theme, and console is our ter terminal too. So yeah, looking good. And about 6 gigs of RAM assigned to this VM. 
I'm going to open up our settings here and let's just take a quick run through on our settings and let's just look at our themes real quick. I believe the dark theme is probably our default. And you can see here, clicking file or folder, folders, that's related to the dolphin. So it opens them as a single click setting. So if you were to single click on your folders, you would go in there. But by default, it's a uh, double click. And then here you can see the standing on the shoulders of giants is our default, which I like that. I think that's perfect. It's a dark type theme. And also I just clicked on get more themes from the internet. So here you can actually download more themes if you want. And that button is just behind my chair. So you might not have seen me click it, but I'm just going to click the first thing that showed up there. That looks moderately cool, like some kind of gradient theme. So I'm just going to install that just for fun, just to kind of see what it looks like. It looks good. Kind of liking it up there on the display. So I'm just going to let that install and then authenticate. And then just like that, it's installed. So now if I close this, you can see it in the other screen there. So if I just double click on it and just apply that as it is, then everything changes. And wow, that's kind of cool. I'm liking it. I see our icons are the same, but I think it's just because I got to close Dolphin and open it again. But if that weren't the case, you could just go here to icons and then select the gradient. And I got the, and I just selected gradient light. What? Oh, well, that's all right. Uh, the only difference really is just sometimes the lettering is more suitable with the dark. But there you can see. So, yeah, all I had to do was just close my dolphin and open it again. Uh, for some reason, dolphin doesn't refresh on the fly when you change icons. So, yeah, not a big deal. But I like it. It's kind of a cool theme. I think I'll just kind of keep it on there. And we have our plasma style. So if you wanted to change, like, the background in your window, maybe you wanted a light background but everything else dark, that's where you'd do it. Here's our colors. So by default, it's color scheming by the current theme. But you can just kind of use a custom here, too, like green, you know. And actually, I think the green looks really nice with this theme. So I go with that, actually. But otherwise, from cursors, from the current color scheme, but I like the green, so I'm sticking with it. All right. So let's see what other coolness is in here. So there's our Windows management. So there you can kind of change around the look of your window bar up on top. Then we have our workspace behavior. And this is our general behavior there, which is cool. And also that's another place where you can like double click for your file folders. Desktop effects, of course. These are always fun if you like effects. So you can add in, and a lot of them are already enabled by default, which is cool. But you also got things like fall apart, thumbnail aside, wobbly windows and all that. Let's try the fall apart just for fun. And I'm going to hit apply here. And then if I close this window, it'll go boyer. Nice. I like it. Cool effect. The fall apart is one I always found quite entertaining. So yes, that's one effect that's cool. Uh, and then, of course, you got others to choose from, like your wobbly windows and the magic lamp is a nice one for opening and closing windows. It's cool effect. And here we got our screen locking settings. I guess I got to hit apply there. I always forget that on KDE. You got to hit apply when you change. So here you can turn off your screen locking if you find that annoying like me. Uh, I don't really like it, but... You know, if I was in a work environment, I would want it. So it really depends on your situation. And here's our green locking wallpapers. So these are the things that you can have go up on your background if you enable screen locking. And then under Windows Management, and then we have our different settings for our windows, dialogs. And here's our shortcut settings. So shortcuts are always good. And our startup and shutdown, we got login screen background. So here we can kind of change our login screen look if you want, desktop session, and then of course our auto start. So if you want certain apps to start up at start up there after you log in, that would be the place. Then we got our user settings. And so here's where we would change our icon. And I kind of like the books there. I might go with that. But then again, we got brushes. Wow. Who can resist brushes? So I'm going to go with brushes. Cool. I'm going to hit apply there. That's the artist in me. What can I say? And then we're our regional settings and all the normal uh, stuff you would typically see in a KDE setup here. So yeah, nothing that's like unusual or anything. Input devices is something I like to go into. And I always like having my num lock on. So I turn that on because I have a num number pad on my keyboard. And for me, it just makes sense to have that on. So I'm going to turn that on. 
And then our mouse settings here, so that's where you can change it if you're a lefty and you need to change. And then of course your other things like your pointer speed and all that can all be tweaked there. And we got our touch screen and touch pad and anything like that that might be relevant to your hardware setup. And we got our display settings and we're already at 1920 by 1080. So for my monitor, that's perfect. Compositor setting, that's the compositor is the thing that makes all your special effects. So if for some reason you had a potato and you had to turn those off, you could uncheck the compositor there. Multimedia, and then we got down here, we got our about. So this is kind of like the stuff we saw in our NeoFetch terminal. So here you can see our KDE version and everything. It's pretty much a GUI repeat of what we were looking at before. And then our software update settings, which I typically leave as they are. And system D settings, if you're a little more advanced and you kind of know what you're doing. Let's go into our wallpaper now, kind of see what kind of backgrounds we got. So here, I'm just going to go up to configure desktop. And here you can see our wallpapers here in the background. So I could even go down and take a look here. And Mountain is one of the other choices. Not a ton of wallpapers in here, but uh, the default is like so nice. You probably don't need it, but that would be my other choice. I really like that Mountain background. That is particularly good. But I think I'm going to stick with the standing on the shoulders of giants here. Giant being Debian, of course. And that is just such a nicely done wallpapers. Yeah, my double thumbs up to the artist or the seduction team that did that. Really like the branded wallpaper there. And then we got our icon settings. So by default, it's going left to right, but you can also go top to bottom. That would be the more traditional style for Windows users that like Windows 7 and XP and all that. I kind of like the right to left. So I'm going to kind of go back to that too as well. I like the left and right. <laughs> there we go. So I'm sticking with the defaults. So we'll just close that. And wow, I got to tell you, the first time I reviewed this, I was pretty blown away with Seduction Linux. And I got to tell you, I'm blown away again for the second time. Yes, it did not disappoint me at all. I'm just going to slide that over there just to kind of get it out of the way. But wow, what a beautiful look. Seduction Linux, this is the stable version of the unstable, as they said on the site. Kind of like that. One of the things that attract me to distros like OpenSUSE, for example, and RPM based is the fact that you get a recent kernel and up to date software at the same time, but a lot of stability. And I see the same thing here with Seduction. However, the Seduction has an added little bonus of being Debian based. So those DEB packages, sometimes I've found in RPM distro. If you're looking for some kind of software that you have to build yourself or hard to find, a lot of times there isn't a whole lot of support for the RPM packages. A lot of times there are, but there are rare occasions where you don't find that, and that happened to me. And then you just got the cool looks of KDE, of course, too, like the nice blur effects that you would see like right here in the logout screen. And even though that's more of a KDE thing, the doctrine just got it right by just setting it up just the way I would like it personally. And it already has the software installed that I typically use anyway. So that's another bonus for me. And I think they really kind of hit it because I'm not really that unusual. So there's a lot of people that probably use similar software. Well, so it's just there for you. It's just a just works Debian setup with the advantages of the unstable repos. So that is nice really takes a whole pain out of getting into it and having the experience done for you. But would I recommend this? Heck yeah. I would even recommend this for newer users because it's very simple to install. In fact, if I were going to compare it to a Windows install, easy peasy, probably easier. The Doxin Linux is one of those double thumbs up distros that I would definitely use again. And I could daily this on any of my other computers where Arch is not an essential thing for me. And I would be just great with that. Double thumbs up for you there, Seduction. A great distro, a great release. And of course, got the giant Debian 12 SID for this. So awesome. I like it. And with that, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. Leave it anyway. And hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching. And we'll see you in time.